Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a really fun project for you. We're gonna do a really simple ink wash technique using supplies from the new Smart Art Kit. Now, Smart Art is a sponsor for this video and they create these monthly kits that can pretty much get you set up with different art mediums. So it's really good if you've kind of been wanting to try different stuff, but you don't know where to begin. So this kit comes with a pamphlet that tells you all about the materials and includes a simple step-by-step -step project. You've got this red ink paste and soapstone chop that you can carve to you know give your own personal signature on all of your um, kind of sumi e type paintings you'll get some super black speedball india ink so these are like name brand things this is a golden panda i believe um, pen and then we've got some speedball pen holders and six nibs and these are ones that i've used before they're wonderful quality and then a couple of um sumi e brushes they are synthetic so they're very resilient and easy for a beginner to use and also three sheets of nujabi smooth watercolor paper which is also a little easier to use than traditional sumi e paper which tends to feather so um you get everything right out of the box ready to go with this project Smart Art sends out monthly kits and they're all really great, getting you set up in some different art medium. I wanted to show you the oil paint box because they sent me that one as well. And I just wanted to let you know they weren't a one hit wonder. Every month is wonderful. Uh, there's an eight by 10 full stretched canvas, four full size tubes of Soho artist oil colors, a pro stroke brush, a palette knife, and um, this brush cleaner, lavender scented. It is so yummy smelling and um, it's kind of more of an all natural cleaner. So it's just great to get you going in a medium and they do a different medium every month and every kit gives you a lot of full size brand name samples and it's about 50 bucks a month actually a little bit less and the more you subscribe for the cheaper it gets now let's get into our project. We're going to do an ink wash painting that's very easy using the supplies from the um, Sumi E kit that I showed you first. I'm beginning with the speedball pen and I'm simply just dipping it in the ink and scratching out a basic shape. So I've done the body of the butterfly and then I'm doing one of the top wings. And when I'm working on something like this, I try to just keep it symmetrical. So once I've started to draw and I've put one wing down, then I kind of look at the other side thinking, okay, I want it to match. I'm not gonna worry about the shape of the butterfly. I'm gonna worry about making one side look like the other side. And for me, that makes it a little bit easier to sketch. Take your time. If you have a really hard time with this, go ahead and trace the basic shape so then you can have fun adding the ink with the brush. Please don't worry about any sketchy lines you have on the edge of your butterfly. Those will go away when we go in with our Chinese calligraphy brush. I'm sketching on some branches to kind of give my moth or butterfly a place to rest and also kind of map out where I'm going to put my, um, my little flowers or my little dabs to indicate flowers. That little splash of ink there, that's not a big deal. That can add some spontaneity and some character to it. To clean my nib, I'm simply rinsing it in water and wiping it off. You just don't want to put them away with the ink on them. Try to keep them in, uh, in top condition so they'll give you years and years of good use. Now I'm gonna switch to the brushes. I've rinsed them off in water to remove any sizing from the brush and I've dipped them into the undiluted black India ink. I made sure to kind of scrape the bristles against the edge of the pot of ink to remove any excess before going in and painting these details in the corners of the wings. I'm putting in any splashes of ink, any spots, any patterns that I can see from the photograph that I used as reference. And I'm just trying to get in the darkest values at this point. You may want to put on music as you do this ink wash technique. It's very relaxing. It's a lot of fun to play with and it really should be. It's a great way to warm up for a day of painting. Now I'm not a um, trained Chinese calligrapher or sumi e artist, but I find that working just in shades of black and gray is a wonderful exercise to develop your eye for value and tone. So again, I'm still adding in those patterns. I'm keeping the video real time so that you can see how long it takes and how easy it is to create this effect in, a, in an ink wash technique. I want to make sure that I have all my darks in at this point. I'm putting some outlines around the bottom wings to make sure that this butterfly is going to stand out against the flowers and the branches I'm putting in the background. Once I'm happy with that, I've grabbed a little piece of plastic packaging and um, I've made a little palette with some water and some ink so I can make some 
lighter shades of gray. So here I'm going in with this um, slightly lighter color and just kind of flicking in some brush strokes. It's not as dark as my first as my first black, and when it dries, um, it's going to give me that range of values that I really need to make my painting come alive. I can even clean my brush off completely and drag some of the ink that's already there that's still wet around on my painting. Now I've added more water to my ink to lighten it further, and I'm using dabbing strokes to put some of the flowers on the branch that my moth or butterfly has decided to rest on. By doing this, I'm creating some cool texture that is in contrast with my butterfly, and I'm also giving it the illusion of having um, different depths of flowers that are some are closer some are further away it's giving us that nice texture that shows that our butterfly is actually sitting on a, uh, a branch of flowers it could be lilacs um, it could be any other type of kind of clustery flowers but by constantly going back and picking up ink that has different concentrations of water and ink in it i'm going to get that really cool texture that um that you can get with an ink wash we're only working with one color i think it's really cool that we can work with one color and get all of these effects. I decided to give the butterfly an all over ink wash because it was just looking a little too stark next to the background that I've left white and I really think that helps flesh out the butterfly. The style of painting is very relaxing. I like adding the different layers and glazes of ink. The nice thing about India ink is that once it dries, you can go back over it with water, you can go back over it with other layers of ink, and it's not going to bleed. You can even use your watercolors on top of your ink wash paintings to give it kind of a, um, a grisaille look and, and get that really um, tonal ink wash beautiful look that is really hard to replicate any other way. So I do encourage you to try this with some watercolors on top after your India inks dry if you feel like you want um, to go the extra mile with this. Now I'm using that fine brush with the um, unconcentrated black ink right on top of some of the flowers that are still wet. I decided I would go over it wet and that way if some of the ink wanted to bleed in some areas it would give me that kind of cool spontaneous look that um, ink wash paintings usually have. I hope you enjoyed this project today. I certainly had a fun time painting it. And it was a wonderful warm-up for a day of painting. Please check out our sponsor, Smart Art, and see their wonderful subscription packages available. I'll put a link in the video description so you can find everything easily. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.